Hi guys, welcome to another Divi video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, in our last video, we created this button down here that when I click on it, pops up a little light box here with the latest news article. But when we left it, it was just a regular button. I didn't do the actual color animation that I've got on the button and the actual border of the element here itself. And once you've got this CSS written, you can use it on all kinds of other elements. You can use it for whole background colors. You can put it on borders of things. And I've got it again as a border on this image, which is a light box also. And I'll show you all how to do that. Really easy to do. So let's get started. I'm going to enable my visual builder. And let's go down. I've actually written this on a code module just for this page today. So I'll delete that. And we'll actually put this in our additional CSS. So if I delete that, as you can see, all the code disappears from everything. Great. Like I say, I'll put this in the additional CSS panel today. That way you can apply it across the whole of your site. So to get there, let's go down to our dashboard. We'll go down to appearance. We'll go down to customize. That's going to take us down here. And if I actually refresh this page, let's just click the link there. There we go. That's cleared the cache there. And we've just got a static background on the button at the bar there. And we're going to go down to the bottom here to the additional CSS panel. And we're going to write it in there. You may or may not have anything in yours. If you've got something there, you can just scoot it down by putting your cursor to the left of it, hitting your return key. Drop it down a few and we can start from here. And it's always a good idea to give your code a title. So a title is forward slash star star forward slash. Anything that you write within stars there will not be read as code. So it's a great place for titles. Okay. And let's create a class name now. If I drop down a couple, we'll return. All class names have a dot or a period to start with. There's the dot. And let's call it, I'm going to call it B-T-C-C-H. You might wonder why. It doesn't matter. You can call yours what you want. That's my shorthand for button color change. But you want to make yours unique. I like mine to mean something to me. That way, if I see it in the code, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. And let's put some curly brackets in there. And we'll open those up. That's great. Well, let's just save this now. I'm going to publish it and we'll come back. I'm going to copy the class name without the dot or the period there. I'm going to go over to my page here. I'll roll down to that button there and I'm going to give that button that class name. So to do that, just go into the module itself, a little dark tab from module. Over to the advanced tab, that's always where you'll find CSS IDs and classes. It's a class. We've already got a class name in there already. Just make a gap at the end. It's okay to have more than one class name. After the gap, paste in that class name that we just created. In fact, that's my old color change one. I can get rid of that. There's the new one right there. Great. Well, let's save our changes here. We'll save the page changes. I'll leave the visual builder open because we'll come back here in a minute. Go back to my customizer. And again, I'm going to refresh this page so that that button will have the class name and we can write our code and see it happen in real time. So let's refresh again. That's great. Now, what do we want our BTCCH to do? Our button change color. Well, I want it to have an animation. Animation. And don't forget all this code will be down below the video for anybody that just wants to copy and paste. I'm going to put colon. We've got to give our animation a name. So again, I'm going to say BT for button. I'm going to put an N on there and I'm going to say color. It can't be exactly the same as that, but it's fairly close. I want my animation to run for 10 seconds and I want it to keep on going and going. So I'm going to say infinite. Well, we've told it what we want it to do. Let's actually create this animation now. I'm going to be using keyframes to do this. So if I drop down a couple more, 
Let's roll this page up a bit so I can zoom in for you while I'm doing this and you should be able to see things start to happen to this button. We've given it that class name. So just down below, I've hit my return key. I'm going to say at that symbol keyframes, just what we're using to build this. And the name of it, we gave it B-T-N-C-O-L. Now I can open some more curly brackets. And we can decide what we want to do with this. So at 0%, we're going to hit the 0. 0% is basically when the page loads or second one of our 10 seconds, as soon as the page loads, basically. And also at the end, which is 100%. So I'm just going to put a comma there. I'm going to put 100 and the percent sign. Then we can open some more curly brackets and we can put any code in there, CSS code that we want. So all I'm really doing is I'm going to change our background color. So let's see background dash color with a colon and you can put in whatever color you want there. For argument's sake, I'm just going to put in a simple blue. And as you can see, that button instantly changed the blue then. Okay, well, let's put a semicolon after that in case we want to add a bit more code at the moment that's absolutely fine i'm going to actually select all that from the zero to the first curly bracket not the second one that's the one that's encapsulating the whole of our code here i'm going to copy it Control c i'm going to drop down return key and paste it back in there Control v to paste now, i don't need two entries there this is just going to be at 50 percent or halfway through five second mark I want the color to change for red. And as soon as I put red in there, you should see it start doing its thing. There we go. It started pulsing from red to blue or blue to red, I should say. And it's going to go from one to the other. Now, if you want it to be more urgent, you can speed it up by changing this number up here, the 10 seconds. For instance, if I make it three seconds, it will look like you're being arrested. Blue flashing lights there, red lights at the back there. And if you want to slow it down for even more drama, just put a longer time in there. And you get some nice little color gradients actually in between the red and the blue there, certainly purples and things like that. But I'm happy with my 10. Fantastic. So we've got our code and we can see it's working here. So let's just publish this. And I'm going to go back to this page here. And if I do a quick refresh there, that will start pulsing. Now we can roll back down. As you can see, that button's now changing color. The border itself, what I did, let's just put this back to how it was. I had a regular row. This moment, that row is full width. I'm going to put it back to normal. So I'm over in design sizing. I delete that. It's going to go back to being normal there, which is a regular row size. And I've got a black background on our row here, as you can see when it shrank back in there. Now to make a little section here, have that same background changing color. You know exactly what to do, I'm sure. Go to the blue tab for the section. Over to the advanced CSS IDs and classes. And that's my old code. We can put our new CSS class in there. Remember, without the dot, B T C C H, and as you can see, it's got the same color change. Now they're out of sync at the moment. When you save and refresh the page, they'll get back into sync with each other. And that's how to create nice little borders like that. And all I did to make it a border was make that row full width there, and then just decide top, bottom, left, and right how much border you want. Go over to your design tab, go to spacing. And we can use padding to adjust the amount of top and bottom, left and right border there. So if I wanted more of one, but five picks top and bottom, I've got the chain link, so it's doing both at once. And as you can see, that's making that thicker. Put it back to how it was. I think it was two pixels, a little more subtle. And just to cover up this end there, I don't want any on the left and right at all. All I did was went into the row, the green tab itself, and made it full width. Over design, sizing, slide that up to 100%. 
you will need 100% in max width also for this to work. And you've just got two little lines top and bottom there. If we roll down a bit to add it to a module, if you want to add it to a module, I just got a regular call to action module there. If you want to make this whole background animated, really easy, just go in there. You know where to go, advanced, CSS IDs and classes, get rid of the old class unless you need it, or you can just add a new one, put in the new class, and it's animating the background of that. And you can do that on rows and section if you want the whole row to actually change color like that. For this one, I just had it having a border there. And what I did was that's a regular little contact form module. I gave it the same color background as the section here. So it looks like there's nothing there. Then what I actually did with this one is I went into the row itself. We're in the middle column here. I went into the column and again over to advanced CSS IDs and classes. I added the class to the actual column that it's sitting in. Get rid of the old one, put in the new one. And then all I did was exactly the same. Went to design and spacing, gave it the space. More space you give it, the bigger the border. Same as the one above there. As you can see, that's given that a lot there. Could not be easier. With the actual image, did exactly the same thing. But that time, went into the image itself. Made it a little light box image. Again, went over to advanced CSS IDs and classes, put our new class in there. And you know how I got that border. I went to design, spacing, gave it three picks, top, bottom, left, right. And that's a great little eye catching effect to have occasionally on your site. I wouldn't want to overuse it too much. Obviously, I've got a lot going on this page just to demonstrate. Let's save our changes, make sure this is all going to work on the front end. And let's exit the Visual Builder. We'll roll on down. And we've got a pretty urgent looking button there that's pulsing back and forth. So it's going to get your eyes on it pretty quickly, which is what you want. Click on it. It's going to pop up our latest news. And like I say, if anywhere else on your site you want to apply that sort of effect, really easy to do. We've got a whole color changing background here. We've got a border with a module that has its own background because we did the column there. And we've got a border on a regular image that you can pop out into a light box. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from Cisco 22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.